Ever since I started making motion graphics, I have been obsessed with one concept, and that concept is randomness. So randomness is really important uh, for a motion designer in motion graphics for two reasons. It creates movements that are very unpredictable uh, and that really keeps the viewer's attention because your brain tries to make patterns out of chaos and so it keeps them looking for longer, which is something that you really want. And randomness also mimics what you see in nature. So one, it's kind of recognizable to the brain. So when it comes to making motion graphics, you kind of have these two options with movements. You can do movements that are very understandable like rotation things moving in a line or uh, even things like waves or you can do randomness movements with no perceivable order now this creates a really interesting problem for motion designers and that problem is making looping animations because simple movements movements that are easy to understand and look at those are easy to loop that start and stop you know where it's going it's easy to hone in and create that as a looping animation randomness in the name completely random it's hard to figure out how to get that to be in a looping animation. Now, how do you take randomness in whatever program and understand it to a point to where you can now take every component that's moving in a random way and loop it? And that is one of the many jobs and problem solvings of a motion designer. And that's what this video is about. And hopefully it inspires you to go into the programs that you use that be Blender, After Effects, Cinema 4D, Houdini, and try to understand those random components because randomness opens up so many opportunities for beautiful animation and so much variety in your movements. Now I want to take a second and say if you're a Blender user and you want to dive more into these motion graphics concepts like animating things in loops and randomness, my Patreon is all about that. It's really kind of my hub for motion graphics things. If you want to check that out, that's going to be linked in the description for those of you who like Blender or you don't even have to like Blender to check it out and learn some stuff. That's going to be in the description. really helps to keep the channel going and makes videos like this possible. Now let's get into understanding randomness so that you can apply it in your animations. So there's two things you can do with random components that either be objects that are um, placed in a random way or things that are moving in a random way. You can do two things. You can either understand it or you can contain it. So first let's do the more simple solution which is containing the randomness. What does that look like? Say you have an animation where you're flying through just a bunch of glowing objects and you have all these objects in this environment but how do you get that to loop? Because all these objects are randomly placed. How do you figure out how to get the beginning of the end to look exactly the same without like a crossfade? You can contain all of those randomly placed objects in something that's definable like a box so you know the beginning and the end. Then you could just duplicate that pattern down the line so it's infinite, run your camera through it so you take the camera at the beginning of that box, at the end of the box, it's going to look the same visually even though the viewer's not going to tell and you can loop that. You've contained it in that box. And again, that allows you to know when the pattern starts and stops. Containing it is really great. And you can also take this in more of like a spherical way and run a camera around it. It makes this other really cool effect. You can have a lot of fun with that creatively. Say you have just a simple animation where an object is just rolling. Well, you can add some randomness to that. Uh, but how do you get that randomness to look like it's looping? So for this example, you can add noise to just a linear animation, and then in your graph editor, you can contain it. So you can say, start the randomness here, stop the randomness here, and then ramp it in. You've now contained the noise, the randomness here, and you can see where it stops and starts. That's how you can do it. And that's a really, that's kind of a more abstract way of containing randomness. All right, now let's get into the next topic, which is, you know, we're, we're done with containment. Now we're gonna go into understanding the randomness. And this is gonna be very specific to whatever program you use. So kind of apply this to your tools. So let's start with the easiest one, and then we're gonna do the complicated one next. So in Blender, we have a thing called the wave texture, and that's a very, you know, understandable movement. It's a wave, it's cir circles are moving outward, and specifically in Blender, looping that is as easy as pi. I mean, I mean that literally, you just type in pi, asterisk, an even number, bam, it's a looping animation, and now it's looping, but that's besides the point. Now you have that, that's looping, because it's super easy and understandable, but then you can take some distortion, you can distort that pattern, and now you are creating a seemingly randomness, but because we know that simple, that understandable circular moving animation, is looping, anything you add to it is going to continue to loop. And then now you've 
understand, oh, we're distorting and already looping understandable pattern, creating an illusion of randomness that you can apply to other components within your animations. So that's sort of a very easy way to understand it because you're seeing, okay, the base of the animation is just these rings going out where it's easy to loop. We're distorting it, but it's still looping. It's still working. We understand it. Now I'm going to show you an example of a much more complicated way of understanding randomness. In Blender, on a lot of the texture nodes, there's a thing called the W, and that's an animatable seed value. Some seed values, you just click them, and it does, you know, a very quick, but this one is sort of, they smoothly transition to each, so you can animate this really cool seed value. I think it's not technically a seed value, but whatever. So let me show you what this looks like in a more complicated way. So you have two noise nodes with the same settings connected to a mix node. The mix node, it does a really good job of morphing one pattern to another, making it look seamless. That's gonna be our best friend. So the first node will animate from zero to three, and the second one, it's gonna animate from negative three to zero. Now the mix node, it's gonna transition from one noise texture to the other noise texture over the duration of the specified frames. So say we'll do 120 frames for this animation. So in the first half of the animation, we will mostly see the first noise texture going from zero to three. As the mix node transitions from the other noise, it will reveal mostly the noise texture on the back half of the animation. So it's going to transition from one, you know, from one noise to the other. Now remember, for anything to loop, the beginning and the end have to be exactly the same. So here's why this whole crazy process makes the W loop. So the reason this loops the W is the first node begins at a value of zero and the second node ends at a value of zero. And we slowly watch the first node transition to the second node, ultimately arriving at the destination of zero so we can begin the way we started at a value of zero. So those are the two ways to handle randomness in looping animations, containing it and understanding it. Now, if you feel a little lost, you're like, hey, we're just talking about textures. How does this apply? to making really cool things. Well, let me show you a couple examples, in my case in Blender, of how we apply these textures to other things. So in this animation, I added some interesting movement by animating a distorted texture. So I added that to the scale of the tube. So now when it's rotating, the scale of the tubes are going up and down and up and down, allowing it to not only look cool with those different scalings, but also it loops. So super fun and super useful. Now in this, in this concept with the keyboard, I created this node network that are all controlled by one noise, which allows me to use the W value. Then what that, that's gonna allow me to randomly switch the icons on the keyboard and I can also animate that in a loop. You can use this on say like a, a website background or even in uh, compositing into something and you can just render a few frames. Now the better you get at motion graphics, the more you'll be able to kind of harness all of these ideas of containing and um, understanding. And so I'm gonna show you an animation here where I use containment and understanding of randomness to make just a really cool animation that I love. So this animation here is rotating on two axes by on 360 degrees. 360 degrees creates a looping uh, rotation. But then I was able to add some noise to that rotation to just make it look weird. And then I was able to contain that noise in the graph editor to loop that. Then I was able to use a noise texture to animate the blinking lights. The noise texture is animating the switch from the glowing material to ones that don't glow. And then all together, you have something that's moving weird and blinking weird, and it just looks awesome. So that was probably a lot. Um, but if you can really hone in randomness, if you're a motion designer, it's going to be your best friend. It is so fun to apply randomness to so many different moving components in the programs you're using to make really interesting things. Noise is just fun and it adds interestingness to everything. And there's noise everywhere in nature from materials to the sky and clouds and wood grain and all that stuff. It's everywhere. Um, so learn how to use it, learn how to animate it, and you're just going to be able to make so many cool things. With that being said, thank you guys for watching. Um, in the middle of the video, I mentioned my Patreon. If you want to check that out, if you're using Blender, you want to learn more things about motion graphics, I'm on there all the time. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.